So, hi, I'm Shoshana. It's weird sitting in the middle of the, for those of you watching on YouTube, sitting in the middle of the couch in front of the picture without the two of us on either side. Like I said in the intro, everything's good with Adam today. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it. Maybe show two, possibly three um, out of out of over 480. So not not too bad. He's not doing too bad at all. So here's the thing. You don't know what you don't know until you know it. And I almost feel as if we could start every single show with that because we've only experienced, we've only read, we've only studied what we know. So how could we possibly know that there's other things out there? How could we possibly know that it, something else might work? And at the end of the day, we won't know until we try it. So here are some tips. And if you're suffering with acne, whether it's cystic acne or whether it is you know, blackheads or whiteheads or what have you, maybe it just looks more like a rash. Think about each of the tips that I'm going to give today and say, can I be doing that better? Can I be doing that differently? And when you do go ahead and give it a try, I want you to think that this is not an overnight thing. Those pimples didn't, they may have, you may have gone to sleep at night without a pimple and woken up in the morning with one or vice versa, woken up in the morning without it. And by the time you're ready to sleep, have one. But the truth is a lot of the work that the pimple did, did before you even saw it, before you even knew it was there. Or it's stemming from something, or we know it is stemming from something much, much deeper. So give it time. Work on something for a month, two, three months. Layer it on. Work on all of these things together. I mean, my acne started early teens, and it was those big cystic acne, and they were sometimes they were red, sometimes they were white, sometimes they were whitish, but not poppable. I was really bad. I really popped a lot of acne in my life and left a lot of scars on my face. And now looking back, I've talked about this before in terms of my own immune system and other reactions that I've had in my life and being on antibiotics so often, I do think that I was actually allergic to to dairy. And I do think now that dairy contributed to a lot of those allergies and acne that I was having back then and throughout my life. Um, when I was doing martial arts, it tend to be a little bit worse because things are a little bit dirtier, grappling with other people. There were different times in my life where it went up and down, but it never went away completely until I went 100% plant-based. And then after a while, all the acne went away. I was still left with the scarring, but all of the acne went away and my body was balanced. But then when I hit this rock where I was in adrenal fatigue and my stress and anxiety was really bad again, I wasn't sleeping very well and I was just worrying all the time, that's when all that cystic acne came back. So it was reignited in my body. So I had done a lot of work to, to fix it through my plant-based diet. Not that I did anything super, super special, but just being so strict with my diet and making sure that I was eating a plethora of great food as organic as possible, uh, not a lot of processed foods. Things naturally got better as they did in many areas, but then when I hit that that rough part again, it all came back and I was stuck having to find out how to he really heal it. So I needed to do more um, of some of the things that, that I'll talk about today. So I'll circle back to that after. So the first thing I want to talk about is staying hydrated. And I challenge you to actually measure out how much water you're drinking in a day. Measure out what you want to drink in a day and see if you can get rid of it all or count as you go and tally it up because often we do one or two good days at, you know, two, three liters of water and then all of a sudden we stop. We drink a little bit less tomorrow, a little bit less the day after, a little bit less the day after. And before you know it, we think we're great water drinkers, but we're really only getting four cups in a day, which is not enough. So really stay hydrated. Um, I don't want to say eight glasses of water. I don't want to say, uh, what's eight glasses? Your glass can be like this. My glass can be like that. Here's my water I'm drinking today for you guys on YouTube. It's water. It's water. I don't know. Starbucks makes the best water. I don't know how they do it. I go in there and order water all the time. Our whole family does. But um, make sure that you're drinking one, two, three liters a day. If you exercise or live in a dry climate, 
or live it because the, you might be being dried out or you might um, just the 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 sun and the heat so it's really individual for you so figure out how much water you need and make sure that you're drinking that water um, also eating a balanced diet is really important what does a balanced diet mean when I'm on the plant trainer podcast it means eating your lentils eating your beans eating your greens eating all the colors right eating the whole grains you want to keep your your you want to keep what's on your plate as less oily as possible, as less processed as possible. You really wanna make sure that you are eating high nutritious foods. It doesn't mean go out and get a whole bunch of power bars. It doesn't mean that you have to buy all these greens that are out there. Try to buy as organic as possible. What I recommend to people to do is look at the organic section and look at the regular section. Very often, especially these days, the prices of organic is not much more than the prices of the regular food. So really try to feed your body. Now, if you're somebody who's still eating dairy or still eating dairy sometimes or eggs sometimes, okay, that's your choice. You know that we've always met you where you are, but if you're having acne and it's bothering you and you want it to go away, give yourself three months without the dairy, without the eggs. You can always go back if you want to. I don't recommend it, but you could always go back if you want to. But it can be very, very inflammatory, especially the dairy, inflammatory in the body, and it can offset the gut. And if the gut microbiome is not in a good place, it's gonna come, it, it's gonna come out somewhere. And very often it's gonna come out through your skin. So maybe you have acne on your back, maybe you have acne on your shoulders, maybe you have acne on your face. Try avoiding the dairy products, any more animal products that you have in your diet already. And like I said, give it time, give it a couple of months to go. And then if that, if you've already gotten rid of that, or if you um, have tried that, you can try getting rid of specific grains. You might want to start with the glutinous grains, or maybe if you're eating a lot of Satan or something like that, Satan, Satan, I don't think you're eating Satan. I think you're eating Satan. Um, then you want to try to get rid of those those really glutinous ones, or if you're eating whole bagels, don't eat a lot of the processed flour, eat a lot of the whole grains and see how that might make a difference because you might have a little bit of an intolerance in there. I don't tell people to go um, gluten-free for everything in the book, but if you're still having this persistent problem, then you might wanna try it out. So um, lots of other things about diet there. Sleep is really important also. Guys, this is not new. These are not things that we haven't talked about here before. Sleep can contribute to various skin issues. It can make dark, uh, puffy circles under your eyes. Um, it could, if you're not well rested, you might not eat well, you might be more stressed and all of that is gonna affect your skin as well. The other thing that I wanna recommend for sleep if you're really having acne problems is your pillowcase. Put on a pillowcase, hopefully cotton, um, works for you like hopefully you have something pretty good and breathable but put on a new pillowcase sleep on that side of the pillowcase for one night the next night flip over the pillowcase and sleep on the fresh side the next night because the oils are getting off of your of your face and going onto your pillow and maybe you've had um pimples that have popped so it, it can get really really bacteria filled in there then on the third night change your pillowcase change your pillowcase all together. Again, sleep side one, side two, and then the next day change it. You might not have to do this forever. You might wanna do it forever. You might not have to do it forever, but that's something that you're gonna to want to start to, um, <laughs> that you're gonna to wanna to start to do. All right, um, the next thing that's also really important once we're talking about the pillowcases and flipping them is your face towel. So when you're washing your face, and you're getting the water off of your face, and then you take that towel, maybe you hang it up, maybe you put it on the counter, maybe you wash your hands again with it later, maybe you wipe all kinds of things because it's what you're using for your shower, shower towel too. You don't want that towel to go back on your face again. So what I use is I use a washcloth, and I use it to dry my face in the morning, 
and then I use it to dry my hands throughout the rest of the day and then at night I take a new washcloth so that every time I am patting down my face I am actually using a new clean towel. I know some people have gone the extra mile to use paper towels. I'm not always crazy about what other chemicals are in paper towels and things like that. I can't control all of that, but that can be an option for you as well, especially if you don't have that many hand towels. You really need to do what you need to do to protect your skin. Protecting your skin from the sun is important too. Some people will use sunscreen, some people will use, um, I use a moisturizing cream that has very high levels of vitamin C that's specific for, it doesn't, it's not a sunscreen, but it does help prevent um, from sun damage. And um, there's lots of great research on that too. If you want to know what I use, you can definitely reach out and ask. Um, but that's something that you're going to want to consider. But also make sure that you're choosing a good quality one so it's not giving you more acne there as well. Re exercise regularly. So people might say exercise and acne. Well, you're reducing your stress. And like you heard in my story earlier, when I got stressed, when, when things weren't going well with my health, my acne broke back out again. Um, after it was like 35 years of having it, it was gone for two years and boom, it was back. So you want to exercise. You want to get um, exercise is great for the body to detox. The body needs to detox things out. And if it doesn't have a way out because you're not drinking enough, because you're not sweating enough, it will find its way through your pores and it will leave you with acne as well. So whether it's walking outside, whether it's um, lifting some weights, whether it's playing team sports, we always say the exercise that you should be doing is the one that is safest for you that you're going to do the most. And that um, that's really important. So make sure that you're doing that. And you also want to wash your face afterwards because as you sweat, um, you're letting out toxins. You don't want them to sit there. You don't want it, your skin to be moist for too long. So you want to make sure that you wash your face. Um, all right. Ready for the next one? I just had another one that I was thinking of. And now I've forgotten it. Um washing your face. Oh, yes. You also want to make sure coming back to the pillow and coming back to sleep that you wash your face at night before you go to bed. Um, for those women or men out there wearing makeup, if you do not take your makeup off at the end of the night, your face will age an extra three days. We do not want to age an extra three days. Make sure that you're taking off your, your makeup. Make sure that you are patting your skin dry and make sure that you are applying anything like our Renew 28 gel or anything else that you know is very good quality to go to sleep with. You don't need all these heavy creams um, that can contribute to acne as well. You want to clean off all the germs from the day. All right, so we talked about exercise and how that can help with stress management. Stress management is really important too. Um, so are you what kind of mindfulness are you taking part in? Maybe you don't like the word mindfulness, but are you meditating? Um, do you go for walks? Do you hang out with friends? And if you are, is that a safe environment for you emotionally, physically? Um, do you feel do you feel a sense of security? What kind of activities can you do? Do do you love doing puzzles? Do you love reading a book? What kind of activities can you do to reduce your stress during the day? Um, avoid touching your face. Very often, if you're like me, you're always touching the hair and then you start to touch the side of the face. So when I started to notice that I was only getting pimples near my hairline, I said, hmm, is that because my hair is oily or is that because I'm constantly touching my, my hair? So the less I touch my hair or back when, the less I touched my, my hair, the less acne I would have on the side of the face too. You have germs and dirt on your fingers. So you don't want to add to that as well. So all of these things that I mentioned right now, with the exception of maybe getting a couple of extra pillowcases or a couple of extra hand towels, completely free. Things that you should be doing on a day-to-day -day basis anyway. But here are some other things that I recommend. I really think that it's going to increase your success rates. It has, it has increased the success rates, not only with myself, but with my clients as well. So a probiotic is really important. Very often when we have um, especially cystic acne, it is stemming from the gut. We need to clean up the gut. And a probiotic is like 
planting a good, nice garden outside, but we don't just want to plant lettuce. We need to plant lettuce and tomatoes and cucumbers to be able to make a whole nice rounded salad so that we can go back to eating a variety of, of great, delicious, fibrous foods, nutrient-dense nutrient foods. So um, you might be using a really good probiotic now, but if you still have acne three, four months later and it hasn't changed due to the probiotic, you're going to want to change it up. Um, I could post the one that I recommend in the show notes. Feel free to reach out. In fact, what I'm doing is I'm offering five free consults to anybody out there. You could gift it to somebody too. The first five people who email us at info at planttrainers.com and book a time with us will get a free consult with me. So you'll get some ideas on what you could be doing a little bit differently and I can make some other recommendations from there. So the probiotics that I love often have pre and probiotic together often cannot be bought in just a regular store. And I always find that although you might be on a really good one, it might not be what your body needs at that exact moment. So change it up a little bit. Try another one for three, four months. You could always go back to the one that you're using, but that might make the biggest difference. And often, sorry if it's some of you who are listening today, very often I'll make the suggestion that people change up their probiotic and they'll say, but I'm on a very good one. This is one that I was recommended four years ago, but they're still having health issues. We need to change up those strands. You can't just continue. You know, the the, the farmers, they don't teal, toil. They don't, they don't plant the same things on the same piece of land year after year after year after year. You have to kind of change it around. The same with the probiotic. Um, good skincare products are really important. It took me years to find one that I was happy with. It had to be vegan. It had to be tested outside of North America because I don't trust the North American testing here. Um, it had to be nourishing to my skin not just taking off dirt and leaving me dry, it actually had to change to to make a good difference in my skin. So sure, it took away it took away a lot of lines, which I was happy about, but it took away that that um, scarring that I had had for years and years and years. I had discoloration and scarring. You'll see on the cover of this, uh, if you go to planttrainers.com, check out the show notes or the cover on Instagram at plant trainers, wherever you're looking at the cover, you'll see my face. All the scarring that was that was in that cheek region um, is completely gone now. So I want the products that I'm using to not just, uh, you know, not just take care of stuff for that time being, but actually be contributing to the health of my body. So that's really important. I'll leave my my favorite one in the show notes as well. And again, feel free to reach out if you can't find that. Um, Sometimes a collagen is needed for repair too. Collagen, I find in some ways, is very overdone these days, especially the plant, the non-plant-based ones. The parts of the animals that are used are absolutely disgusting. The amount of um, energy that the body needs to break it down to even create the amino acids and peptides on their own is uh, it, it makes it so long for them to use, and you need to take in so much of it. But for some people who really have a lot of scarring or who have a lot of problems with their skin, a collagen might be needed. So again, um, I have a plant-based one that I absolutely recommend that's been getting my clients amazing results. So I will put that in the show notes as well. But if you are thinking of going the um, collagen route, do make sure that is plant-based, please. Uh, the next thing is overall gut health, right? Gut health is really, really important. So if you're not sure where to start with that, start eliminating some of those processed foods, some of those oily foods, the um, deep fried foods for sure. Start putting in every day. Ask yourself, how can I get one more healthy food on this plate? How can I have one more ve raw vegetable or raw fruit um, in this meal? Start to do that um, and reach out if you'd like what you'd want to be one of those five consults and for those of you who do have really bad acne scarring and you're not going to go the route of a really powerful face care system that's properly tested that's that's vegan that's all the things a sea buckthorn oil can help with scarring i something that i started before i started using my own these products that i found however it went really, really slow, but it did make a difference mostly in my discoloration. 
but make sure that you're finding a good uh, a good quality of it. Use it very sparingly at the beginning. Make sure that you're not allergic to it. And remember that everybody is different. So if sea buckthorn oil is the way that you're going to go, um, if you are getting results with it, I'd love to know what those are. So uh, f take pictures and feel free to um, send that to us at Plant Trainers on Instagram is a good place to to kind of send us a little bit of a picture like that. And overall, I think I've given you so many different tools today. Um, again, feel free to reach out with any questions. The first five people to email us and book that appointment uh, will get a free consult. And we look forward to seeing you at Plant Trainers on Instagram, on Facebook as well, the Plant Trainers podcast. But of course, check out the show notes for all the details at uh, planttrainers.com. Have a great day, everybody. We will see you next episode. Bye-bye.